Hi everybody! Welcome back to episode 7 of Joey's Java Talk, which happens to be our final episode of the series. I'm sitting down today to talk about how we choose and ultimately market our season here at the Fulton. I'm joined by executive artistic producer Mark Robin, marketing director Eric Pugh, and the creative design and art directors from Connective, which is a full-service marketing agency that focuses on identity and experience design. Mark and Eric sit down, usually in about January or February, and they start talking about a season, from our main stage to the Groff series to the Eichmann Family series that we do for the kids. Uh, each of these series has their own brand and look, and we work closely with Connective on all things marketing, from our posters to the logos to the billboards you see, email blasts, social media, and any sort of preview videos you see that gives the Fulton its brand and identity. Uh, Connective is, they're awesome. I, I love watching them work. I love the ultimate finished look of what they do. And I like to use the word cool. They're just a cool company. And they really do give our theater its identity and brand. So I wanted to sit down and talk to them a little bit more about um, their process with Eric and Mark and how uh, things end up looking the way they do for the Fulton each season. So sit back uh, and enjoy today's final interview. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode seven of Joey's Java Talk, where today I am joined by executive artistic producer Mark Robin, marketing director Eric Pugh, and uh, guys from Connective. We have Josh Hamer, who's the art director, and Zach Blank, the design director. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today about how we choose a season, and you guys end up creating the beautiful artwork that goes along with it. So I, I want to kick off with asking um, a little bit about Connective, if you can talk a little bit about um, your services and what, uh, what you guys do uh, here in the Lancaster area. Yeah, so um, we're, we're a marketing agency. Um, so we have a heavy focus in branding, identity design, um, social media management, uh, content creation, video photography, and we do website design and development. So we look at it as all those pieces together we use as marketing tools to help businesses and organizations, um, you know, get their message out there and um, connect with their audiences appropriately. So we've been together for about six years. 2014 is when this, this iteration of Connective started. Um, and, you know, Eric is greatly responsible for where we are as a company right now, because in 2015, after we had only been a been an agency for a few months, he met with us and actually gave us a chance and said, hey, I want to um, give you guys an opportunity to possibly work with the Fulton. So ever since then, we've had this long, you know, standing relationship and we've just grown closer and closer. And um, over the years, we've, you know, just had a great relationship that's, that's just grow grown stronger. And, um, you know, we've learned from each other and we've grown together. And, you know, it, it's just been a a lot of fun and just an opportunity that is just, you know, priceless, so. Yeah, um, I, I say a lot of times that we, we, we consume things with our eyes first. We, we see a look of something and I think your company does, a, not just for us, but for the other things that you do around town, it's, it's a great thing. Um, Cause that for me, I, I may, that's how I respond to things through photographs or videos. And I, I, I just think your look your style and what you guys create is just really cool and smooth and um, and it just it's exciting to see what you guys do. Um, Mark and Eric, um, can you talk a little bit about when you guys uh, are picking the season, when you start doing it, and um, the differences between, you know, the main stage choices and the Groff series to the, you know, to the family, family shows? Uh, sure. Uh, it's, it's different. Um, each season is different and each timeline is different. Um, but I actually am already looking at the titles for the 22-23 season mainstay. Um, and I usually go to mainstage first because that's obviously where the bulk of our subscribers are. And um, the parameters that I use to choose the mainstage are very different than the parameters I use to choose the Groff series. Um, 
and once I sort of have a basic idea, you know, I then take it to Eric um, because Eric isn't just the marketing director for the Fulton. He's also one of my um, closest collaborators in picking the art um, along with you, Joey Abramowitz, as you know, um, and, um, and other members of our staff that I feel uh, I need to get their opinions to know, hey, is this a good choice? Is this a bad choice? What do we think? Will people come? Will this excite people? Um, but in reality, you know, because of the way we have to get rights, as you know, because you did this as part of your show, as part of the series, you know, you have to get them pretty far in advance to make sure you can actually get the, the ability to do the show. Um, so um, for, the, for the main stage, it's usually two years out. Um, for the Groff series, it's about a year out because I kind of want to wait to see what the hottest new thing in New York is. Um, to see if there's a possibility for us to get in on our stage as soon as possible. Um, because the Groff series, the parameters for the Groff series are more in line with what a non-for-profit theater was meant to be. Choosing plays that your audiences will be forced to talk about and not always entertained by. These are the plays that you want them to go home and not have the play leave them and have more than the conversation about whether you know, how did they fly her in on an umbrella? You know, um, no offense to Mary Poppins um, because there's value in that. But the Groff series really is about engaging our, our collective community in a subject matter first. Um, whereas the Groff series is engaging them in an experience, a total experience. Whether that experience is, is Miss Saigon, which is certainly not an HR Puffin stuff title, you know, or whether it is, you know, Shrek, you know, there's, there's reasons that we're bringing people in. So I look to see what our audiences are responding to, what do they like? Um, and then what is our, to, you know, to bring everybody on the call, you know, what is our branding? You know, what is the Fulton brand now? What is it the Connective and, and, um, and Eric and, and company are, are working on so that our audiences, when they see that visual that you talked about, Joey, respond and go, oh, that's what the Fulton is. That's what I expect them to be. Um, and over the last three years, especially our brand in this market is to be the Broadway house, is to be the big spectacular or the um, in, uh, in, your, in our way, the absolute best we can be so that instead of going to have to go to another city like New York to spend, you know, $300 a ticket to see Kinky Boots, come here and know that you will see as good of a production, um, especially on our main stage with the production values, cast, the professionalism, and you know everything that goes along with that. And then upstairs um, to see something that will hopefully challenge you and, um, and make you go home and wonder. Um, so that's, I mean, that's a, a quick version of what's really a, a, a much bigger process. But um, as I mentioned earlier, I go to Eric almost immediately every time I have a thought. Um, first of all, what most people don't know is that Eric is more than just a marketing person. He is a musical theater genius. Without question, his knowledge of this industry is uh, is i've been in it my whole life and i think he knows more than i do um so i trust him implicitly and if i say hey what do you think about this title and if he does that thing with his nose that he does first which is the well i'm gonna i don't really like it but i'm gonna be kind as i tell you i don't like it um or i see that flash in his eyes which is yes i can sell that yeah um because as much as people don't want to think about it the theater is still a business. We still have to be able to keep our lights on. And, you know, I have to pay Joey's exorbitant salary. Not. Um, but uh, we, uh, we have to put all that into play. So I go to Eric next usually and say, hey, Eric, can we sell this? You know, does this work in the flow of the way in which our audiences will have their experience? Um, and then we talk about it a lot. Um, rarely. I mean, I think rarely, especially with Eric as, as a partner on this, do I ever say, hey, hey, hey we're doing this. Yeah. You know, we got the rights to Jersey Boys. It was a no-brainer. I was like, we're doing this. <laughs> um, but um, uh, most of the time, it's a dialogue. Is, is that a fair, an, uh, fair assessment, Eric? Yeah, I think definitely a fair assessment. I think from a marketing standpoint, one of the things besides being a fan, I do sometimes mark 
will tell me. Make sure you take your spamness or whatever you want to say out of this equation and put your marketing hat on. Um, and I do definitely try to do that in multiple ways. One of them is the season, you know, is the first time slot is always important to me because that first show is going to get people into the theater at the beginning of the season that we can then turn into a subscriber um, who will come to the next five shows. Um, it's important to have shows like Jersey Boys um, who has a mass appeal to get people into the door for the first time or for the first time in two or three years. Um, and then it's important to look at the subscription, uh, the series as a whole, are there are too many shows that are alike, you know, um, versus too many shows that are completely different and we look schizophrenic. Um, but Mark never comes to me with those type of seasons. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Um, you know, my biggest thing is, is that first show really going to set the tone? Because it really does set the tone for the season. Um, you know, we do have our holiday productions, um, which are huge for bringing people in for the first time or as a tradition for a family. Um, and then, you know, we want to make sure that there's more for them to come back to. Yeah. And, and, and not because Connect is on the call. I've said this behind their backs. You know, one of the things that Eric and I also talk about is how magical it can be with a certain title over another because of what Connective is going to bring to it. The way in which they're going to create the imagery, the conversations we're going to have with them, the sort of marketing visual play that they can add to it. In, in fact, sometimes has informed my decisions on, you know what, this isn't as exciting of an opportunity for them to be able to play and to video and to animate as say this would be because it's so much more than just choosing a play. How do you cast the play? What do you put in front of your audience? What's the design? But before they ever get to the theater, what, what the marketing department does, and especially the relationship that Eric and Connective have, is they have already informed our audiences of the experience they're going to have before they get here. So it, it's, a, it's a really awesome, I can say now, it is a really awesome experience with this team. Um, and uh, and it's, it's been really a, a, a major um, thrust, I think, in the Fulton's growth because of the team that we have in place now. Oh, for sure. Um, once you guys have decided on, and you, we've acquired the right for all the shows, the next process is to start creating, you know, the looks and the feels of each of these um, titles. Um, Eric, can you talk a little bit um, more about logo designs, how sometimes we can we're required to use a Broadway logo, or there are times when we do have the freedom to work with Connective uh, to create something that is, you know, ident identified as our specific show. Yeah, um, you know, first and foremost, it is about which are the shows that are going to require us to use the logos that they um, have provided. Um, then looking at, you know, is there any elements from a logo that we might want to use um, because of brand recognition. You know, there are shows like Mamma Mia where just the word Mamma Mia is so recognizable, it, you almost, why recreate the wheel when it already works for you? Yeah. Um, but nine times out of 10, we definitely prefer to create our own logos, um, mainly because um, Connective, you know, has established you know, the style of the logos that we do, which is um, called double exposure. Um, you know, one of my first and foremost thing is the visual must tell a story. Um, and it doesn't have to be the story and give something away, but it has to invite somebody into the show and for them to get a sense if they're gonna like the show or not. Um, you know, I equate it to looking at Netflix with thousands and thousands of titles you can't possibly read every blurb on every movie. So you're looking through the visuals and really that is the biggest selling factor, mm -hmm. at least for you to investigate more. Um, so, you know, that's really important. So because we've developed this style and this brand for the Fultons, um, you know, there are shows like Grease that we're gonna be, you know, in the 2021 season that they want you to use their logo and they're nine times out of 10 are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. 
Uh, we were fortunate this year because Connective is brilliant um, and that we designed the logo. We're like, let's go for it. Let's present this logo, see if it's approved and we'll go from there. If not, we'll use their logo and we'll work around it. Um, but they approved it, um, which was really, really exciting. So, you know, on top of that, you know, the first thing people see is the brochure. Uh, which is the logo. So that is the first thing that sets the tone for the entire season. Um, and then that image, which Connective can talk about later, is used in multiple ways from our social media to our print advertising to billboards. So these images have to look great in so many different mediums. Um, so that is probably, I would say, the season and the design of the season in the um, uh, look of the entire season because then you want to start to design a season that feels like it's in a family together, you know, mm -hmm. so you want um, Billy Elliot to resemble in the Heights, even though they couldn't be more different shows, um, you know, you want it to feel very um, similar. Um, so yeah, it's, that's probably the biggest thing that I think I do and our partnership with Connected, we do all year. Um, which leads me to the next uh, discussion. Um, the next part is getting ready for a photo shoot when we do require actors for these things. And um, I know Eric and I, Eric will come to me as casting associate and say, hey, I need you know, two girls for this, I need a guy. And sometimes we can use you know, uh, one girl for three different pictures because you know, the way they are going to you know, create the look. Um, can the, you know, Connective and Eric, can you guys talk how you kind of put together what those photo shoots end up being and what is what is needed um, for the, from them to create for them to then take you know the photo shoot and then create around what the, the image that they capture that day. Yeah, I, I'll start real quick, but um, you know, as I develop the blur, by uh, essentially start thinking about what that logo can look like. Um, you know, the thoughts I run it by Mark. We have a conversation about it. Sometimes it's. You know, I was at the Arden Theater last year watching Ragtime, and I knew we were going to do Ragtime, and the logo just appeared to me during the show. So I texted myself and um, said what I wanted the logo to look like, and that was months before we even started. Um, but once we kind of developed these thoughts, um, you know, it's kind of a rough, if you will. I go to Connective, we have a huge brainstorming meeting. Um, we first talk about, and maybe I shouldn't hog all this and let you guys talk about it, but we talk about what can be done with those designs, what can't be done, and then we start thinking about the look of the season. I'll let Josh and Zach kind of uh, take it from there. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you, you touched on kind of one of the most important things when it comes to um, the initiation of that process, and that is that, you know, from the, from the get-go, there's a collaboration that's happening. Because um, you know, there you bring such a, a depth of knowledge and understanding of kind of what those shows are, especially to the audiences that care about them. And you know, as as a as a marketing team, uh, we strive uh, to the best of our ability to to really understand the audiences that we're talking to. Um, but at the end of the day, our our specialty and our expertise is in our craft. And so when, when we have that collaboration where there's an intimate understanding of what this show needs to, what needs to speak to people, and then also um, from our side of the table, um, we, we kind of try to, to look at those things analytically with the, with the approach of how, how is that going to translate to the materials that we're, we're building. That often breeds a really, uh, really great conversation well before we even get to that first photo shoot so that when we actually are in those, uh, in those uh, shoots, um, we already have a vision for exactly how everything's gonna be used that we're shooting, um, and we have an agreed upon concept. And so when we bring in the actors, we bring in the talent, we're lighting them the way that we anticipate them uh, being kind of composited into that final image. Um, and we're kind of all working together towards a, you know, an ideal finished product, even though no one's ever seen it before, you know? <laughs> hey, Joey. Go ahead. I was saying, Joey, something that you might not know is that, you know, how we sit down as a team at the beginning of a season and talk about, hey, this is what's happening, you know, and this is what we want to accomplish this year. For the last two years, which has been really awesome, Eric and I have actually sat down with the entire Connective team 
at the beginning and by the beginning, I mean like last April yeah. for the following season to say, hey, you guys, now that we've announced it and we know what the shows are, and we go through all 14 kid shows, golf series, and the main stage, show by show. And we talk about, you know, what are we hoping to do as an artistic spin? How are we going to do this differently? Because obviously we're trying really hard to be unique. So we're not just cookie cuttering anything that's been done before. Yeah. Um, so that... Um, Connective is actually involved in the artistic process of the decision of what the uh, overall sort of look and feel will be months, months in advance before it ever gets to the to the photo shoot date. Yeah. And then um, the and photo shoot, yeah, go ahead. and then you know what we'll do is have that conversation with Connective. How many bodies do we actually need? Mm -hmm. um, you know, for instance, I'll bring Greece back up. Um, you know, we knew we needed a Danny and Sandy type, um, but, you know, sometimes they know that they can find an image or create an image that we don't have to necessarily have at mm -hmm. the photo shoot. Um, but, you know, and then we start looking at can you superimpose, um, you know, Burger Palace Boys on the jacket versus actually having a jacket that says that on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and whatnot. And then we, you know, of course, I come to you, we do the casting, we look for that stuff. Um, I go to Caitlin Walsko, who is our amazing props person who can find anything anywhere. Um, and she, um, so, you know, she'll provide props. We look at spaces throughout the theater. Where can we go? You know, this year we got to use our brand new chamber studio space, uh, which was perfect for it. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot. And then I work with Beth Dunkelberger. Um, mm -hmm. She works in our costume shop a lot. She kind of serves as the costume designer. Um, it's almost like doing a show because mm -hmm. we have to do fittings. We have to, um, you know, measurements, all that stuff, finding the right look for these people. Um, then doing the photos um, and then the magic happens, you know, the Disney magic, if you will, happens after that. It, it's, it really is magic because I, I wasn't able to be at this year's because Mark and I were actually in New York um, casting that week. But last season when I, um, when I got to attend the shoot and kind of watch you guys work, it was fascinating to me because, you know, I'm, I, I consider myself a pretty creative person, but there were times where, you know, an actor was just sitting on like a folding chair and I was like, is this really gonna work? Like, how are they gonna do this? And then, you know, I, I reference, you know, uh, the Wendy in the window for Peter Pan. There, was, there wasn't there was much to that photo shoot. It was really much, you know, with her sitting on a chair, looking off into, you know, the distance. And what, what happened from the time that photo shoot ended to what ended up as the image and poster for that play was beautiful. And, and your, your work is just, yeah, that particular image may be one of the most spectacular visuals for a show I've ever seen. Yeah. Talk about in capturing, capturing the magic, the grandeur, the feel, the time period, the fantasy. It's, it is a stunning piece of art. Yeah, for sure. And that, that kind of doesn't happen unless all the pieces that we've been talking about are in place to begin with. You know, it, there's a lot of intentionality. There's a lot of really, really great thought that's put into it by all parties. And I think that's, you just, you have to have that level of intentionality to expect a great product at the end of the day. So I, I think that's one of the things I appreciate most about kind of the process that we've developed as uh, a team collectively um, is just the, the willingness to really take the time to think critically, to, to be creative, to, to allow the space for those, those wild ideas to, you know, to come yeah. to life. So, um, and then a little bit, uh, you guys can talk a little bit more, um, the differences between what you create for, you know, specifically for, you know, email blasts or social media posts or, or um, how you then also use, you know, video preview stuff. Um, are there, is a, lot of, is a lot of that different or is it pretty much you kind of create an image and um, use it how, how it's needed? Yeah, that's, I think, uh, Josh, I'll let you jump in too, but I mean, really from the get-go, um, we like to, to let the artwork be the, the piece that kind of uh, inspires everything else. Um, so that's where we start, um, you know, because well before we get into the specific pieces that we need to use to market the show, you know, whether that be an e-blast or whether we're doing a billboard, you know, we, we know that the title is confirmed and we know that we have to sell that. So to begin, we, we want to capture the essence of what the audience is going to experience, sort of what Mark touched on earlier. 
you know, making sure that the experience they're going to see in their in the environments where they're being marketed to is consistent with what they're going to find and what they're going to experience when they're actually sitting in those seats watching the show unfold in front of them. So once we kind of establish that show artwork, which, you know, we, we do design intentionally for a lot of different shapes and we know that it's going to it's going to end up being a pretty versatile piece. So we are thinking about it from that standpoint, but really we start with that piece. And once we kind of get that established, then um, we'll start diving into how does this get disseminated across all these other platforms? Josh, I don't know if you want to talk more about kind of that process of how we, we take it that step further. Yes. Yeah, so when we first started 2015, 2016, we did things a lot different than we do now. And over the years, we've gotten smart, like at the very outset of designing something, we talk about, okay, what, what's the canvas and what all needs to be here and what is spacing if this needs to transform into a, you know, widescreen billboard compared to a really tall poster or, you know, Google ad or anything like that. So we've gotten um, really good at like knowing ahead of time, okay, here's all the things that are probably going to be done throughout the next 12 months. And so we intentionally design our setup to meet all those needs. And so like, if you were to look at our art files, there's guides that are like, here's post review, here's, you know, um, widescreen format view, you know, here's an ad view, here's square yeah. view. Um, and then we, we actually design um, a style guide for each show too, which helps us, um, you know, dictate, you know, all the design direction for every show throughout the course of promoting it, um, which is something we started a handful of years ago and I think it's really helped because um, the Fulton still does some in-house stuff too and they're, they're able to use that style guide to coordinate with whatever we're doing so that things remain consistent in overall look and feel so yeah and I think one of the greatest things that uh, we evolved over the first season into the second season or whatever is creating that logo with video in mind um, you know, it's almost that world is created so as if a camera was, could move through it and we could use different things because after that first season of working together, we realized how important one video was to me and, you know, for the industry, you know, to market uh, theater production. Um, so, you know, now we do title reveals, which are interactive and dynamic versus just having a title flash on the screen and being done. Um, so that's really fantastic because it's all about engaging from the first moment all the way through they leave the theater at the end of the show that they just saw. Um, and, you know, so part of that journey is the visual recognition and the um, ride they take, if you will, with, you know, some of our videos and different stuff like that. I, um, it just reminded me, uh, you, the last summer while we were doing Mamma Mia, I was a cast member and um, my partner and I had uh, the entire cast over for the Tonys that night. And um, it was everyone, I mean, we had at least 35 people packed in my living room watching television. And on the commercial, one of the commercial breaks was this season preview for la for this past season, which was the one with Tinkerbell flying through the theater and then ended up with Mark on stage. And if you could have heard this group of actors scream in excitement and just to see it is, it really does engage the viewer to it's inside the theater. And, and like you said, going through, taking the camera through the logo, it really is, it's, it's very specific and um, amazing, amazing design work. So it's, it's awesome. Um, I want to ask a couple final questions. Um, Mark, what is, what is the, what do you need to see in the images um, before you officially sign off and say, this is, this is what we're going to do? What, what needs to really all be there for you to say, yeah, we're good. I checked that off. Let's print it. It's like casting for me. It's, it's knowing that the complete package of what I'm hoping for or as close to it as possible is present. And sometimes it's something as stupid as a, is can the font change this much or color or depth of color you know eric will tell you that you know i don't know how many versions of titanic we went through because i i, I wasn't happy with the with the color of the sky <laughs> you know <laughs> and poor connective they were probably like oh my god what is this boy's problem um but there's there's a thing that happens when you see an image no different than when the actor comes in and you go that's it I, I try to get as close to that. You know, this year it was Cinderella. 
um, we were going through Cinderella and it just, it, it just wasn't happening for me the way that I wanted it to. And Eric and I, as always, you know, had a conversation and he talked to Connective. And then we were able to go, oh, it's because we're putting the focus in the wrong place. The focus on this shouldn't be this. We should do this. And that was it. Then the change happened. It was like, oh my gosh, it's magical. So it's really about casting. It's looking at the whole piece and going, yes, for what this piece is, it is now saying it to me. So I, I sign off on it. Yeah. Uh, and Connective, um, I just wanted to ask, um, what is different about designing the identity experience for the Fulton as opposed to some other businesses that you guys are, or, you know, collaborations that you have? Well, I have an answer for this. I don't know if you have an answer for this, Josh, but I can, I can, I can answer and, and Josh, you can add anything that I've missed. Um, I think predominantly in our industry, I mean, we, we are a marketing agency. And so we work with, with, clients that span multiple industries. Um, and I think with the entertainment industry, especially something like theater, um, there's a much higher emphasis on the artistic value of something. Um, so as, as a marketer, you know, a lot of times my end goal is, is to communicate a message. And, and it's no different through the phone, but at the same time, the message in a sense is the beauty. It is the, the emotion um, more so than, you know, just a remember this, uh, data or remember this this info about an event so um, i think you know a lot of artists um both visual and musical that i look up to will often say you know if you, if you know exactly where you're going with something you know you you've killed the the beauty of what it means to create and so there's kind of an interesting balance there of, you know we want to we want to be really creative and we want to be able to kind of let the pieces like create themselves in a sense um and allow that creativity to flow but at the same time we do have these these ideals for what it needs to say to an audience. So it's, it's an interesting balance that I think is, is um, if not unique to the Fulton and the experience of designing there, it's at least, you know, something that I think is in the forefront of what we do more so than, than it often is. Uh, just finding that, that equilibrium between we're, we're, we're making this so that an audience can connect with a message, but also we're making something that needs to be beautiful and needs to, needs to just have a life of its own. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's, you know, when we're developing a brand for a, an organization or a company, a lot of times it's, you go through a rigorous couple of months really developing this and honing in all the, all the details. And then at the end of the day, you, you launch this brand and you hand over a style guide to the company and you help support that brand. And it's something that for hopefully, a number of years is really effective and works and doesn't need much change other than maybe some evolution, some things being added over time. With the Fulton, it is 14 shows every season. So it's 14 individual style guides. It's 14 individual shows that we have to be creatively thinking about. And on top of that, because it's live theater, like Eric says this all the time, things change so often, like almost daily. Um, you know, where you, you just got to always be on your toes. It's not something you can just sit back and just, just relax. You've got to be constantly on your toes and aware that things are just going to change. Things are going to happen. Opportunities are going to arise. Um, obviously things with culture, things with what we're going through with COVID, like it, it, it changes a lot of things. And um, I think we've, we've gotten really good at just understanding that and just, and just realizing that like, you know, we may get a call from Eric tonight that needs addressed right away. And we just got to drop everything we're doing, but that, that is our responsibility. And that's, that's a burden that I think we enjoy bearing because it's just such a good relationship and it's exciting. It, it really is exciting. Um, well, I appreciate you all uh, taking time and speaking to us today. Um, I, I really do. I remember, this is before I even worked here. I was just an actor um, who lived, you know, in Philadelphia. And I remember seeing a preview video. I don't even think it was one that you guys had done. It was maybe before the, the collaboration started, but I was, I just said, this is something I think the Fulton really could use is a, a look and video and really do preview things and all that stuff. And it's been so exciting to watch the, this happen over the past few years and now to, to um, be able to be a part of it with you all and to watch your artistry and your dedication to our uh, organization. And it's, it's, it's awesome because we're never going to do the same thing twice. And I love that about uh, the collaboration that we're always aiming 
to do better and to uh, lead the way in what this can all be as you know uh, identity design and all the things that you guys bring to the table so i thank you for being part of the last uh maybe not the last but the end of this uh the seven part series of this uh, little show that we came up with in the last few weeks so um uh, take awesome. care of yourselves and um like i said thank you again for uh, taking time to thank you joey you're a rock star thank you for doing this <laughs> all you. right guys <laughs> so that concludes today's episode I want to say thank you to Mark and Eric and the team at Connective for joining us in discussing how we market a season for the Fulton. Today was the final episode of the series, for now. I'm going to take a little rest, uh, maybe revisit the series in the fall and continue to have conversations with different departments that we didn't get to visit with uh, in this seven-week series. Um, but we're going to take July off. Um, we have a pretty big month of the theater. For those of you that don't know, we're going to be doing a live telethon on July 25th that will be airing from 7 to 8 p.m. on WGAL 8, as well as streaming on our Facebook and YouTube pages. So stay tuned for more information about what's to come on July 25th. I can't finish uh, this t without saying thank you to a few people. Uh, first and foremost to Eric Pugh, who is a wonderful collaborator and uh, helps me so much with this series. Um, thank you, Eric, for being a part of it, uh, as well as Mark for letting me exercise some of my artistic energy uh, and putting it into this uh, series. It's been amazing. Um, I want to say thank you to Ben McNabeau and our musicians for the theme song, as well as Connective for the artwork uh, and the opening credits. Um, and then I want to say thank you to all of you who have tuned in at 2 p.m. or at 8 p.m. or at midnight or whenever you can't sleep and you want to just hear some people talking about theater. Uh, it's been a tremendous uh, experience to do this, and I thank you for your energy and your uh, encouragement, as well as uh, awesome feedback uh, from doing this. Um, it's awesome. I wish we were in different circumstances, but here we are, and uh, we're trying to make the best of it, and I thank you for helping me do that. Uh, so take care of yourselves, stay healthy, wear your mask, and uh, hopefully we can be back on stage before you know it. Um, I thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody.